uh, again, I might uh, pause in between. All right, I might uh, stop speaking all of a sudden in between. It's uh, the only reason is uh, I might be accepting someone in the meeting. So uh, the entire for the entire time, someone would be would be able to uh, would be asking me to join the meeting, or some some of you might uh, get dropped. Uh, all right, and I might need to get you in again. So if I pause, don't worry. Your internet connection is working just absolutely fine. It's just that I'm accepting someone's request to let him in. All right, and people in background continuously also keep on WhatsApping me. Okay, so I might pause over there as well. Okay, so don't worry about that. All right, so another thing which I want to talk about before we uh, set the agenda uh, is that if you have any questions, uh, please, please uh, hold the question for certain amount of time unless and until I ask you to ask your questions. Okay, uh, uh, it will just uh, break the flow of the uh, sessions which are going on. So uh, best practice would be to hold on for some time, all right, and ask the question. Another recommendation would be to ask the question, which is uh, like which is being displayed on the screen or the slides which we have covered, all right. So there might be certain questions, all right, which you might get an answer in the upcoming slide. Okay, so uh, if I if your question is not answered till ending of the session, right, then you can ask the question. Most of the questions, since I've been delivering these trainings from last four years, all right, I know standard set of questions which people have doubts on. Okay, in terms of career, in terms of certification, in terms of what should I do next, in terms of what is my profile, this is my profile, I should do this or I should just do that. So those questions I'm very aware about, very aware aware about. So. Uh, I'll answer all those questions. All right. Just wait for the, those slides to come. Just wait for that time slot. To, that's another request. Okay. Uh, now this session uh, would be around two hours or uh, two hours long. All right. Apart from that, if there is any Q&A and uh, that will extend the time. Okay. Now what would be covering in this uh, demo? Right. So basically we would be covering about what's cloud computing, what was the traditional way of computing. All right how we used to run our workloads application, all right? Uh, then how did we move to cloud? Why did we move to cloud? Okay, then how cloud sells you everything as a service and cloud everything is a service. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Then we'll look at uh, various services, all right, which we are covering in this uh, course, all right? Plus the uh, projects, right, which we would be covering in this course. And the certifications which would be covered, all right? After completing the content, there would be uh, certain certifications which you would be eligible to set and pass, okay? Uh, we'll talk about that. So that would be a sneak peek, okay? Apart from that, <clears throat> the uh, web magic benefit basically means uh, the study materials or the mock test or the practice exams, uh, whatever I would be sharing with you, you are the benefits all right so i will talk about those things as well and finally uh, an open mic for the questions and answers which are not answered during the session okay so this would be the flow okay uh, again a quick confirmation if you can hear me or not uh, just type it on chat all right few people just confirm me that if you are able to hear me or not hear me or not clearly Fine, thanks a lot. Okay, so let's let's start with uh, our first slide, which is on traditional computing. All right, so how do we use to run an application? So if I want to run any application, it could be anything. It could be an application like uh, uh, Airbnb. All right, so let's say I'm a travel company and I want to build an Airbnb-like application. Right? So how would I build an application like this, all right? So where would I run this application? Fine, I will build this application. Developers might do some, some sort of coding and they'll build the application for me. If I'm going with a traditional computing approach, where would I run an application like this? So it is part of this that if I'm running a traditional approach, I will run it on some physical servers. And for hosting this physical server, I'll require a data center. So what's a data center? For those of you who don't know, data center is nothing but a building, all right? A building where you will have all right designated space all right for uh, keeping your servers okay 
Now, for keeping this server up and running, you require data center, you will require necessary power and cooling. Okay. You will require you will require right networking for connecting the data center to the outside world and for internal routing and switching. And for running the application, you will require storage. Okay, so these are the things which you would require for running the application. Uh, basically, not only the application, first thing for running the servers. Okay. Then on top of that, you will have your operating system. Now, again, it could be, as per your choice, it could be a Linux operating system. It could be your Windows operating system, whatever your application runs on. And finally, you will have your application, all right? So you will have your Airbnb application. Now, it's not about only one server, all right? So you will require multiple servers like this. So some of the servers might run the website or web interface some of the servers will run the application logic, the backend of the application, and some of the servers you will require for databases. Okay, you will require server for monitoring of the infrastructure. All right, for hosting your monitoring tool. All right, uh, you will require servers for uh, access management, or you can say management. So you will require in total a lot of servers, right? Plus. To keep all these servers, you require data center building, all right, power cooling, and various things. Okay, so in traditional company, this is how we used to run our workloads. We used to run our applications. Okay. Now there are multiple drawbacks when you talk about traditional computing. What are those drawbacks? Okay. These are those drawbacks. First thing, there would be a lot of capital investment. Okay. So for buying these physical servers, right? Let's say I bought approximately 50 physical servers. Some of them are web servers, some of them are uh, databases, some of them are application or uh, application or backend logic. Some some of them are used for uh, monitoring application. Some of them are used for identity management application. So I bought total of 50 physical servers. Okay. So for buying these 50 physical servers, I made a capital investment. So. Let's say I made a capital uh, capital investment of 500k. All right, I made a capital investment of 500k dollars. Okay, now to keep this infrastructure up and running, all right, keep this uh, entire application up and running, keep the data center up and running, to keep this physical server up and running. Okay, there is an operational expenditure, which is known as OPEX. Okay, so let's say the operational expenditure is 200k dollars. Okay, again, I'm taking in rough figures over here, right? The, the real figures might be much larger than this. Okay, so for running this application, I invested to keep this uh, application running to keep the server running. I invested uh, approximately, approximately 200k dollars. Okay. Apart from that, there is something known as total cost of ownership. Total cost of ownership is for this data center building. Now, this data center building doesn't come for free. Okay, either I buy a land space, right? I build a structure over there. Okay, and all the necessary uh, things which are required for a data center to run, I would need to invest in all those things. That is my total cost of ownership, right? This again, there will be a cost associated with this as well. So let's say to build this data center building, I invested approximately 300k dollars. So yeah, 300k dollars. Okay. And again, the total billing is around this much. Okay. Now this application, Airbnb application, which I wanted to build is up and running. And it gives me a return of only 90k. Right. Gives me a return of only 90k per year. Okay. Or let's say even more, let's say give me a hundred K returns. My investment is thousand K, but returns what I'm getting is very less. So when you talk about traditional computing or traditional way of running the infrastructure for companies like Airbnb, Uber, Netflix, right? All the digital native companies, okay? Uh, buying data center or running traditional computing is not an ideal approach. Why? Because there is a huge investment made 
and the returns what they will gain out of those investment is very less so there is no roi when you talk about traditional computing okay so again this is one of the disadvantages so there is no business motive there is no business returns which i am getting out even after running this application apart from this there is uh, in in the technical front right, these all are again business related stuff in the technical front my physical server has let's say four virtual C, uh, four physical cpus and 8 gb of ram and i am running a web server on top of it okay my application is a web server and this web server utilizes only 20% of the resources these resources remaining 80% is wasted but can i run something else from top of it answer would be no i wouldn't okay it, it might hamper the performance of my web server so because of that i might i might not run anything else apart from that okay so optimizing resource utilization is again a very big challenge over here okay then next provisioning time right getting this 50 server up and running it will take you approximately 2 to 3 months and whenever you want to onboard a new server or pass from this 50 server right minimum time required is 25 days once you ordered the server and once it once it is delivered to your data center once you have rack once you have put it inside the rack you have done the proper cabling okay it will take you approximately or minimum 25 days okay and the scope for automating all these things is very less because you cannot automate the process of picking up a physical server and putting it inside rack or put, pulling the cable and pulling the cable inside the server you cannot automate that process okay at most what you can automate would be you would automate the installation of the operating system okay that to be that also not to a greater extent but to a very less extent you would be able to automate the uh, provisioning of the operating system or installation of the operating system so there is very less scope for doing automation so these are the challenges of traditional computing so what we did to come out of it was we still on on data centers instead of running everything on physical server all right again i will still have my data center building i'll still have the <coughs> power cooling i still have those things still have network i'll still have storage i'll still have all these things okay but instead of running operating system directly on top of the uh, physical server Just give me a minute. <clears throat> so, uh, guys, am I audible to everyone? is my voice breaking for everyone like anyone else uh, you are able to hear me right all right cool <clears throat> cool cool okay so instead of uh, running the application directly on the physical server right what we uh, or operating system directly on the physical server what we did is we on the physical server we install something known as a hypervisor right and uh, this hypervisor basically okay uh, lets me run or uh, lets me extract the physical resources what physical resources this physical server will have physical cpu it will have memory or you can say ram okay so instead of allocating this cpu and memory everything to one single operating system what this hypervisor lets me do is this hypervisor lets me create something known as a virtual machine something known as a virtual machine and each virtual machine can have its own operating system in an isolated way so this virtual machine wouldn't know that there is one more virtual machine or this operating system wouldn't know there is one more operating system running no okay and an each operating system can have its own application in a very isolated fashion again you don't need to know virtualization to learn cloud 
but virtualization basically uh, act as a catalyst over here right which help which help cloud computing okay why so data center companies like amazon or azure microsoft azure or google cloud couldn't sell physical server to everyone because buying physical server and selling it to customer would be a very costlier affair it would be like customer either run it on inside its own data center or it runs inside amazon's data center or microsoft data center it would be the same thing right so they couldn't sell physical servers to the customer because it wouldn't give any cost benefits right neither to amazon or microsoft neither to the customer but now but now things changed when virtualization came things changed something like microsoft amazon or google cloud all right thought of creating an infrastructure as of like thought of creating an infrastructure where everything would be virtualized customers can come they don't need to buy any hardware customers can come and they can just run their virtual machine okay so let's say this physical server costed amazon or um, microsoft let's say $1000 okay and on top of this customers can come they can they don't need to pay $1000 they don't need to pay data center cost they don't need to pay power cost cooling cost network cost or storage cost no they don't need to do that again storage cost they need to pay and so and network cost also but they don't need to pay the cost for data center or physical server or even for this hypervisor license they don't need to do all these things okay they can create their vm and they can pay only for their vm let's say each vm cost them $20 and on this physical server since there is an power of hypervisor all right while the power of virtualization okay there would be hundreds of virtual machine running let's say there are 200 virtual machine running and from each virtual machine amazon is earning $20 okay so let me calculate quickly before okay we can just understand the math very roughly okay so amazon invested or microsoft invested $1000 all right for buying a physical server and now they are selling virtual machines again every virtual machine wouldn't have the same cost i'm taking a very rough figures over here okay and they are selling each virtual machine to the customers of $20 okay and they are making a benefit over here of this much Okay. not only for amazon not only for amazon this benefit also this also benefited the customers who run who want to build their own data center where they were taking 10 physical servers or 50 physical servers now they can just buy five physical servers all right a large configuration and there would be a minimal cost of a hypervisor and they can run 50 different application on those five servers instead of buying five different uh, 50 different servers this is what virtualization right so virtualization Act as a catalyst over here to basically enable cloud. That's why we are talking about virtualization. Now you don't need to worry about virtualization. If you don't know virtualization, you cannot learn cloud, nothing like that. Because you don't get the access to this layer or this layer. Being a customer, you will always play with in cloud, you will always play with virtual machines. You don't get to see all these things. Okay. Now, benefits of virtualization, capital investment is reduced. How is my capital investment reduced? I don't need to buy many physical servers. Operational investment would be still there. Okay, because you need to keep things up and running. OPEX means OPEX is the cost for keeping things up and running. There are better chances of return on investment. Like for Amazon and Microsoft, there is a returns on whatever they have invested. All right, by selling just virtual machines. All right, total cost of ownership would be still there. All right, if you're running your own data center and doing virtualization. But if you're running the same virtual machine or you're just buying the virtual machine from the cloud provider, then the cost, total cost of ownership goes away. Okay. Resource utilization is optimized over here. Okay. So if each of them utilizes 10, 10 percent of the physical resources, then uh, my 100 percent physical resources can be utilized. Progening time is less. You can create VMs on hypervisor, right? If your physical server have resources to create VMs in five minutes and in cloud, it is much more lesser. And this hypervisor thing provides you API to interact. Okay. So what, what can I do with this API? So there could be tools like Ansible, all right, Terraform. If uh, I am sure there would be VMware admins in the, on the call also. So there are tools like uh, 
VDOPS. Uh, yeah, no, VDOPS is for operation manager, VCOPS, VCOPS. Okay, which can automate the creation of the virtual machines. So that is the advantage you get. This is what virtualization is. Now, moving the conversation a bit uh, on a different track, right? Just to make you understand why cloud is necessary, why why there is cloud at, at first place. So the question would be, can I create electricity at home? The answer would be yes. I can create electricity at home. How would I create electricity at home? Uh, one of the simplest means would be to buy uh, solar panels. Let's say each solar panel cost me $1,000. Okay. So total investment on buying solar panel is $3,000. Then there would be operational or maintenance charges. Like that is again $1,000 per year. And there would be some modification in your current home appliance. Again, there, is, there would be a cost of, uh, let's say, $900. By doing all this uh, uh, expenditure, you can generate electricity at home. So let's say you made an expenditure of this much for 10 years. But the monthly electricity what you consume is on, of only, let's say, $50. Even if you multiply this number, all right, with 10 years, all right, even if you multiply with this number with 10 years, then also you are not achieving what you have invested. Even if you multiply all these numbers, you are not achieving what you have invested. Again, hypothetical number, okay, you cannot achieve it. So there is no returns. That's why we don't generate electricity at home. Instead of that, what we prefer doing is we prefer uh, not setting up the solar panels. We prefer buying electricity and consuming electricity from various electricity providers. Okay. And we pay only for what we have consumed. So we pay only for the units of electricity what we have consumed. Okay. Now bring the same concept on cloud. So instead of setting up the physical servers, instead of setting up the data center buildings, right? instead of doing all those things, virtualization, all the things which we just talked about. What I can simply do is, there would be some cloud provider. It could be Azure, it could be AWS, it could be Google Cloud. They will set up the data center. They will set up their own data centers. Okay, and inside the data centers, they will set up uh, physical servers and on top of these physical servers, I'll just run virtual machines. I'll just run virtual machines. I don't need to uh, buy any physical servers. I don't need to set up physics. I don't need to set up data center. I don't need to do all those things. Okay. I can just run virtual machine and I can pay for what I am running. I don't need to worry about paying for physical servers what Amazon has bought. No. I'm creating a virtual machine of let's say two virtual CPU and four GB RAM. Okay. And I'm keeping that virtual machine up and running for uh, 600 hours per month. I need to pay for only that amount of hours. And if I'm powering off that virtual machine, I don't need to pay any cost to Amazon. Okay, that kind of benefit cloud provided. Okay, so this basically helps me to achieve my capital invest uh, expenditure to buy physical servers and uh, to run those physical servers, whatever is needed, right? To zero. I like don't need to make any capital investment. I will be charged only what for what I use. Operational expenditure would be there because companies will still need people like you and me, right? To keep everything up and running, to design it, to consult them, right? To basically set them up. They will still need people like you and me. Okay, so it is not like it is not like uh, if you are moving away from a uh, data center, it's not that. Uh, you are you, you don't have any job opportunities are decreasing no, nothing like that uh, it cloud has built more job opportunities than what physical data center could have could have ever built okay so whatever we used to run inside our own data center now it's running on cloud all right and people like you and me so some of you might be a system admin some of you might be network people some of you might be storage admin all right some of might you might be uh, developers or monitoring people. Yeah. All right. So it's just that whatever you used to do inside your data center to help your company, all right, on achieving whatever your company wants, you're still helping your company to achieve whatever they want. But this time you are using a platform instead of building your own data center. You're using Azure as a platform over here and everything would be running on Azure. 
Okay, there would be still VM that VM will still have operating system. Okay, that VM will still run a .NET application. That VM will still run a Java application. It will still require a developer to build that application. Okay. So people are still needed. So whatever your roles and responsibility were there inside your traditional data center, it is just getting mapped to cloud, right? So whatever you used to do, so if you're a network admin, right, you might uh, do routing and switching. You might design network for your company. You do the same thing, but this time you're doing it on cloud, right? And you're not playing around with physical router and switches. Okay, you're playing around with virtual appliances, all right, virtual networks. The only thing that has changed, you don't get access to actual physical uh, physical router or switches, right? So that has changed. So, so there would be still a cap, cap, uh, operational investment to keep everything up and running. The return on investment is large, supposedly very large. Okay, the reason for that is uh, I'm not investing much over here. I'm paying for whatever I'm consuming. Right? If I'm not consuming anything, I can design my infrastructure in such a way that if I'm not consuming anything, I don't need to pay anything. Right. So like, like recently, uh, which happened in uh, Hotstar. So Hotstar usually runs on a fleet of uh, 100 virtual machines. Okay. But uh, because of this India Pakistan match, there was a huge, very huge traffic. All right. And uh, Hotstar being a platform. All right. Uh, created our records in itself. Okay. So they scaled up their number of servers to 500 and they paid only for that differential amount of time. So that match was around for three, four, five, whatever hours it was. Only for that amount of time, the virtual machine, additional virtual machine was created to serve the application and they paid cost only for that differential amount of time. Okay. That is what uh, cloud help us to do. So very less total cost of, sorry, very less, uh, very high chances of getting returns on whatever is getting invested. And you pay only for whatever you're using. That, that's what Hotstar did. So there was huge traffic on Hotstar. They paid only for the infrastructure additionally, what was created during the match hours. And as soon as the match ended, they had automation that deleted the additional server. Okay. So you can do that. With, with cloud, this is never possible in your physical data center. You will never be able to achieve this. All right, you cannot. You cannot. You will be never able to predict. All right, uh, that what amount of traffic will come. And chal, aapko pata chal bhi gaya ki there would be ten million traffic, ten million users concurrently accessing the application. Would you buy five hundred physical server? Are you certain about it? No, never. I won't be. I won't do that. Okay. Even if I want to, I won't do that. What after the match? What what would I do with that physical servers? Right, they will just keep on running and they will just occupy space inside my data center. So I can I will never be able to achieve it inside physical data center. That's the reason why companies are moving to cloud. That is the biggest reason why companies have moved to cloud. Okay, now not only moving to cloud, they are trying to integrate their application all right inside the cloud itself. So it's now it's now not about virtual machines, the like things are uh, uh, escalated, right? I will say things are escalated. Uh, the reason is now people or companies don't buy or believe in buying virtual machines. That's a different story. We'll, we'll talk about it more later, but let's understand what cloud right now is. You don't need to worry about resource utilization of physical resources. It's not your physical servers. Amazon's physical server. They worry about how to optimize the resource utilization of the physical server. Like it's their headache. Okay. Provisioning time is very less. You can create physical server, like virtual machines in seconds. Uh, in, in Azure, you can create a, a Windows virtual machine up and running in two minutes. All right. With OS booted, you are able to take the RDP. Okay, so provisioning time is less. Uh, then automation. All right. So instead of decreasing the job opportunities, cloud has built more job opportunities, and one of the reason is automation. Okay, so the companies don't want to just just think of it in this way. So again, taking the example of Hotstar, Hotstar created 500 additional physical servers. Right during India Pakistan match. Okay, do you think that these finite physical servers were created by a cloud engineer by going to it, Azure portal and doing next, next, finish? Answer is no, they cannot do that. They cannot create 500 physical, 500 virtual machine by clicking on uh, Azure portal or by running some CLI command. They need automation for it. Okay, so huge, huge opportunity of doing automation and companies are using it full fledged, right? Okay, so Netflix. All right, all, all the digital native companies, you can talk about Dunzo, you can talk about Flipkart, you can talk about Mantra, all right? All the, all the digital native companies, okay? 
they use automation all right to their core there, there is nothing like creating vms by running a cli command or by creating a vm by going to a web interface and clicking on next next finish they don't do that right they don't create vms in that right so there are n number of automation tools right not only for just creating virtual machine but configuring the os on the virtual machine deploying the application on the virtual machine so this is a job role which has uh, built up in the market right and there are very less people and the people who know that right now how to achieve automation on cloud they are learning like anything okay another advantage is uh, of cloud is you can go global in minutes okay so again taking example of uh, uber all right uber is a company or let let's take an example of pubg all right do you think pubg is played only in india you all know it's, that's not true right it's played across all over the world but you take example of uh, meet, uh, gaming streaming platform like twitch which which is a platform where millions of people do a live streaming of whatever they are whatever they are playing uh, and these people are from across the world do you think that having your application running in one single continent will be able to handle the users from across the world answer is no you cannot do that right the major reason why these digital native companies are successful is they provide ultra low latency in terms of using their application go to netflix all right play a movie it's a matter of click the movie would be play go to jio cinemas play a movie all right it will buffer you will shut down jio cinemas you will watch not netflix i don't want to watch uh, jio cinemas i have a bandwidth of 150 mbps still the movie is buffering i don't want to watch it i'll watch netflix jio uh, cinema lost its customer all right why latency ultra low latency so these these companies offer ultra low latency to their users okay now how they give you this ultra low latency <laughs> one of the simple fundamental is keep it as close as to the user all right let's let's take example of my classes let's say my classes is in thane and it's nearby station all right and i have another branch of my class which is in borbandar road in thane all right which class would you prefer obviously which is nearest to the thane station right because i will reach there faster less hassle all right similar in similar way when a network traffic flows if if your servers are very far it will take time to reach all right and that will overall in, increase the latency of your application okay in same way all right what these uh, digital native companies do they don't deploy their application in one single part of the world cloud providers like azure okay provide data centers okay they have 29 regions they are present in 29 different countries right now i might be wrong but it is approximately 29 to 31 i don't remember these figures right i don't need to remember these figures okay but there are <clears throat> more than 30 regions okay uh, where if you are launching an application tomorrow like netflix all right and you want ultra low latency for your users you can deploy your application in that in that data center in that country or all right or in that city okay and your application can be a success and one of the key success uh, criteria or sorry one of the key things which will drive the success would be for your application would be low latency and you can achieve it on cloud you cannot create 29 data center of your own in different different countries or different different cities of the world you cannot do that as a company netflix cannot do it as a company uh, uber airbnb or right, i cannot do it as a company no one would be able to do that right there are n number of factors not about just money you cannot being a let's say i'm a hoster all right and i want to uh, set up my data center in china do you think that china will allow you to set up a data center so easily there would be n number of laws you would need to follow okay but these cloud provider even take care of that they set up data center they follow they comply to all the countries or the cities law right and they they give you the infrastructure to create vms and you can go global in minutes there is a support for developer i'll skip this point for now uh, uh, we'll we'll talk about it in more detail when we actually start the class uh, scalability i already explained you you can increase the number of servers or you can increase the number of services whenever however you want cloud provides you redundancy so 29 different cities 30 different cities where they have their data centers available so even if one city even if one region goes down fine i can run it in different regions so in india azure has three different regions mumbai pune and chennai i'll run my production in mumbai 
if mumbai goes down due to any xyz reason hona nahi chahiye aisa lekin if it goes down due to any xyz reason i will run my workload in chennai i'll have a backup or something i'll run it in chennai i can achieve it very easily provide the redundancy not only redundancy between two cities within their data center also all right within a region within mumbai also they have three different data centers right within within that within mumbai they have three different data centers so even if one data center goes down you can run vm in a different data center and you can achieve redundancy and you have something known as elasticity so what what's elasticity think of it as a rubber band right so you can increase the number of resources whenever there is a pressure pay for it pressure released rubber band will come to its original state you don't need to pay anything additional for it that is elasticity so you can increase the number of servers you can increase the number of services you can increase the number of bandwidth throughput capacity or storage throughput capacity you can do all those stuff very easily you need to pay only for differential amount of time now give me 10 more minutes uh the time yeah, give me 10 more minutes let me explain you few more things and then i'll unmute everyone for for questions okay now what you would do after buying this physical server uh, sorry what you would do after buying this virtual machine you will host something what you would host so let's say i want to build an application like coin dcx i'm not sure how many of you know about cryptocurrency or coin dcx right or let's 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 in chalo theek hai cryptocurrency ke bare mein baat nahi karte sabko nahi pata hoga uh let's say i want to build a trading application right uh, trading application of what Mar- share market okay now to run this trading application i want to be, i want to have a low latency database so i'll buy a virtual machine i'll run oracle database over it i might i might set up oracle rack over it and then my application will have a ultra low latency database all right you can do that you can still do that that's possible that is one of the basic things or core things is cloud provider but apart from this what cloud provider saw this as saw this thing as a is a as a opportunity okay fine you buy a virtual machine you build whatever you like but what if a cloud provider says that you want a ultra low latency database i'll give it to you you don't need to buy virtual machines from me you pay only for the database and that that to not for the ram and cpu don't 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 pay for ram and cpu pay me whenever you are reading anything from the database and whenever you are writing anything inside the database then that that time only you pay me which one would you prefer answer is obvious that you will prefer sab kuch ready made where you only need to pay for uh, the time when you are writing the data inside the database and reading the data from the database and advantage what you get is you don't need to worry about virtual machine you don't need to worry about operating system or keeping that operating system up and running okay so cloud provider not only provides you virtual machine virtual machine is one thing okay apart from virtual machine cloud provides you ready made services so take it in this way buying virtual machine is let's say you are cooking food okay let's say you are cooking food and to cook food you will require a lot of raw materials okay you can go to market you can buy those raw materials and make whatever you like that is virtual machine it's like raw material okay build whatever you like run whatever you like there is an alternative also in in, in making food let's say what if i will uh, i'll give you canned food all right pre processed fruit food right you just need to go you just need to bring that uh, food can boil it and it would be ready to eat you don't need to buy raw materials in that you need to, you don't need to buy vegetables you don't need to buy mirch masala you don't need to do all these things everything will come inside that tin ka dabba take a container boil karo food is ready no hassle of cutting the vegetable putting proper masala no need of doing all this okay so vms are like raw materials you can buy vms you can like you can build whatever you like your headache but okay cloud provider also provides you ready made service okay where you just need to start using it all right and build whatever you like on top that is like pre processed food canned food that is known as platform as a service in cloud world again not can food but uh, platform as a service there is one more category which we we often do i don't want to make food i don't want pre processed food i'll go out all right to some restaurant and i'll eat okay i can even do that and that is 
that is also possible in cloud and that is known as software as a service okay zoom meeting what we all are right now connected to okay is a software as a service can i can i build my own uh, video conferencing tool answer is yes i will buy a virtual machine i'll install webrtc so what is webrtc webrtc for those of you who don't know webrtc is a uh, video conferencing or web streaming ka software okay i'll install webrtc and two users can connect to that webrtc server and they can do conferencing but who will take that headache or the building of all these things okay zoom meeting is providing me a ready made platform i can easily send you mails you just join by clicking on those mails all right so zoom meeting is an ideal example of software as a service this these cloud providers also provide software as a service so a uh, software as a service in uh, microsoft world would be microsoft teams all right o365 dynamic 365 all right then you have they, they recently introduced ems ems is again enterprise mobility and security these all things are uh, software as a service so cloud provider provides you all these things so it's not about virtual machines only so there are three categories which cloud sells you you have infrastructure as a service raw materials take virtual machines take uh, build whatever you like video conferencing platform banana hai virtual machine kharido jo install karna hai aur aapke platform ke liye install karo you will have your video conferencing platform ready then second is platform as a service okay and they will provide you key ingredients all right you you can just utilize those key uh, key ingredients and you can build whatever you like here you don't get access to operating system you will get access to data and application or whatever you like to build and you don't want to build at all okay mujhe build karna hi nahi theek hai then you have software as a service zoom meeting microsoft teams software as a service okay so these are the three categories in uh, cloud computing okay now i'll unmute everyone uh, please please uh, keep your questions restricted to the slides which we have covered ठीक है सर्टिफिकेशन में क्या होने वाला है कोर्स कंटेंट क्या कवर करने वाले वो सब बताऊंगा ठीक है इन कमिंग स्लाइड्स व्हाटएवर क्वेश्चन यू हैव कीप इट टू द स्लाइड्स इन नाउ सो आई वन म्यूटेड एवरीवन यू कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चंस any questions from anyone okay fine so i'm assuming that there are no questions so i'll just move forward okay so how is uh How is Azure built? So Azure is built on uh, this is how it, Azure is built. So you have their core infrastructure, right? Which is VMs, storage, and network, right? You can buy a VM storage network, and you can build a platform, build a application, whatever you like. So I can buy VMs, and I can build, I can install uh, WebRTC server on VMs, all right? And I can build my own Zoom plat, Zoom meeting like platform. Okay, this is one way. now on top of vm you can build whatever you like if you don't want that what microsoft has done is right on top of their infrastructure on top of their vm they have built ready made services pre processed food okay so you want to build sorry just give me a screen share stop yeah so i was saying that uh buy vms that fine if you don't want to buy vms then uh, they have built ready made services platform as service you can use their platform as service so let's say now again i want to build something like zoom meeting 
but don't want VMs. Okay. So for running the uh, application logic of my Zoom meeting, I might use ready-made service like uh, web, web apps, all right, or uh, uh, API apps. For database part, I might use ready-made uh, database service like uh, document DB, uh, Azure tables, okay. For building analytics, all right, like what what analytics would I I would like to build? I want I want to know okay, how many users actually started the meeting. So let's say meeting link create kiya, but user ne meeting and start kiya, okay? So on on a daily basis, there would be millions of meetings which would be created on Zoom, right? Now it cannot be the analysis of this cannot be done on normal database. You need a data warehouse for that. So you buy VMs and you build a data warehouse. But second option is you buy a ready-made data warehouse, which is SQL data warehouse. Now they have renamed this as Synapse Analytics. You can also buy Synapse Analytics. Okay. So this is how this is what the building block looks like. So they have built their platform in this way. Okay. Now we would be learning Azure platform. We would be mainly learning infrastructure as a service and platform as a service because software as a service is Microsoft Team, Office 365. They are not under Azure. Microsoft sells it as Microsoft Cloud. Okay. So Microsoft Kender is again two segregation. So there is something known as Azure, which provides you pass and IS. And there is something known as Microsoft Cloud, which provides you SaaS software as a service. And software as a service is nothing but the uh, Microsoft 365 suite. Like right? uh, again, Exchange Online, Teams, uh, EMS. Uh, defender and number of tools again. So this this has its own certification track and own learning path. Being a cloud administrator, no one is expecting you to learn this. We need to learn this. Cloud engineer, cloud administrator, consultant, architect, whatever you want to call yourself. Okay, so we'll be focusing more on this. Okay, now what are we learning? What services are we learning? So these are the services which are learning. So uh, again, in data center, we would run compute. We would run network, we would run storage, we would run databases. Same is on Azure as well. So there are come there are multiple compute services. So there are multiple ways of running your application. So if you want to buy raw material, buy raw material and run your application. You want to buy something pre-processed, you buy something pre-processed and run your application. Okay. Now your application will, but obvious require network, provides so network. Your application will require storage, provide so storage. Your application will require database, pre-created databases. So for every category, there are various services. So compute network storage is a core. Now to support this compute network storage, all right, to for them, there are security services to keep everything compliant as per what companies want. Okay, there are compliant services to monitor, all right, monitoring server, monitoring cost of the server, monitoring application. There is monitoring services and to automate everything that are automation services. Okay. Then next to basically automate the deployment of application, which in today's world we call it as CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. There are DevOps tools. I mean, we'll be talking about DevOps also in our class, not in details because this is not again a DevOps class or an automation class, but we'll look at it. All right. We'll talk about analytics, all right? A lot of data, big data, right? Terabytes and petabytes of data. Process karna hai, reporting chahiye. Business meaning nikalna hai, okay? Kitne logo ne Zoom ka premium subscription kharida aur kitne time ke baad kharida? Kaise nikalo ye data? That has to be learned, that has to be driven out of, driven out of whatever raw data you have. You would need to do machine learning over it. You would need to process it. And then finally, you will get some analytics. So the analytics service also available on cloud. Then you have identity service. Who will have access to what? All right. We'll talk about very in very detail. We'll talk about Active Directory. Active Directory is the is not only the heart of Azure. It's heart of Microsoft. Our galdi say be Microsoft Active Directory down wo aajke time pe Azure Active Directory, not not the on-prem Active Directory. Microsoft Kapura Harek cheese banoje. Ablo Kujbi login nigger. So it's heart of 
Yeah, sure. Uh, sure, sure. Okay, so it's heart of it's heart of uh, uh, the Microsoft product offering, right? So whatever identity related or uh, formation related stuff you need to do, right? It's all done through Active Directory. And there are some miscellaneous services. So we'll be covering all these services. So turning back the pages. So in compute, we'll talk about virtual machines. I hope everyone knows what a virtual machine is. All right now, I'm not asking, I'm not teaching you how to create virtual machines. Right. So I would be mainly talking about how to basically So I will be talking mainly about how to basically make a proper solution using virtual machine. When I say proper solution and highly available solution, a solution which can scale up. So uh, like tomorrow you want to build something like uh, a hot star. All right. Then how would you do auto scaling? How do you scale your infrastructure? All right. How would you uh, monitor it? How do you do cost control? All right. Everything is hosted on VMs again. Okay. <laughs> How do you achieve all these things? So it's not about just creating VMs. I'll teach you how to create VMs. That's the small part. The major part is how to keep it highly available. When to when to give VM at first place, all right? So when you talk about companies like uh, when you talk about a company like let's say uh, Dunzo, right, or Zomato, these companies don't believe in buying VMs. There is a reason behind it. These are these companies don't hire for a role of system administrator. They mainly hire for roles like software development engineer. Do you think software development engineer would know how to uh, manage or what are the best practices to manage an operating system? No, they are least concerned, least bothered about it. Okay, so these companies don't buy virtual machines. Right? These companies buy ready-made services, pre-processed services again. So from services like Azure Function, all right, container services. Logic apps, okay. They these people buy these kind of services. So VMs are fine. Azure Function is a service which lets you run code directly. Okay, it lets you run code direct directly. So let I'll show you a very quick example, uh, which happens on my website. Let me share the screen. So, so whenever you go to my website, which is Web Magic, what happens? So let's say you buy, you went to this website and you went to Azure and you want to sit an Azure demo. So all of you must have done this. That's why you are in this meeting today. Okay. You will fill your information. You'll fill your information like this. All right. And a registration is created. Now, this registration was created on my website. Okay. How did you get a Zoom meeting invite? So as soon as you clicked on the submit button, there was an API call. There was a Node.js application or let's say a Python application running in backend, all right, which talks to Zoom meeting as an API at the, at the API layer. And it creates a meeting invite for the user over here. So since I have done it, earlier it might not show in the very starting but there's a meeting invite even created for me because whenever i uh, create uh, create a new meeting invite i usually do a testing if everything is working fine or not it's created over here what happened over here so there is a piece of python code running in backend okay which basically creates which talks to zoom so whenever the, the, whenever someone submits the request it talks to zoom and it tells Zoom that this is the user ID, this is the email ID, this is the mobile number. And he wants to register for Azure demo, create a meeting invite. And uh, Azure, like back in, in back in the Zoom meeting creates the meeting invite. Now this Python application, the question is where it is running. Do you think that I would be running on a VM? My website is running on a VM. My website is running on a VM. Web magic is running on a VM. But this logic, which actually creates, which actually talks to Zoom meeting, is not running on a VM. Because I don't need this Python code to be running 24 into 7. No, I don't want it. 
I want to run it. I want to run this Python. I want to run this Python code whenever someone fills the inquiry form. Then only this Python application should be executed. Why should I buy a VM for that? Why would I unnecessary uh, incur additional cost? Because there is not twenty four into seven that people are registering inside my meeting. All right. Okay. So they register like once, like ten ten meeting invites happen per day. Okay. Ten people fill up the inquiry form per day. Okay. That is how it happens. Okay. So do you think buying a virtual machine only for ten time running the application, keeping the application running twenty four into seven? Or that VM running twenty four into seven is justified. The answer is no, it is not. So Azure provides a service known as Azure Function. So inside this Azure Function, I have a Python application, and this function is not running twenty four into seven. Whenever someone clicks on the submit button, there is an event generated in my website. And this event is delivered my delivered by my website to Azure function. Azure function processes the data which has it has received. What data it has received? It has received the email ID, mobile number, and the name. Name. All right. It formats the data properly and does an API call to Zoom. And then Zoom meeting. We get the meeting invite for you, and this meeting invite. Soon as the meeting invite is created, you get a mail. You all must have got the mail. You got a mail. That is how the flow is happening right now on my website. That is how it works. So this is one service which lets you run code without worrying about infrastructure, and you pay only for when you are running the. Code. Okay. So this is one service. Which is, there is a practical use case which I try to explain you right now. Then you have something known as logic apps. I show you one more interesting flow on my website. Now, whenever you fill up the form, all right. Whenever you filled up the form, okay, I get an email. So I show you my email as well. So not only Zoom meeting is created, but an email also I get. So we we log sign up right now. Also people are signing up. Great. uh fine okay so i get a mail like this that this is the name this is the email id and this is the mobile number who has registered for azure demo i get a mail like this now to communicate with you all right i'll never ask your name so if you are, if you have registered uh, uh if you have registered via inquiry form on my website i'll never ask your name why will i never ask your name so shivani just joined in and we are seeing her on seeing the meeting invite over here uh okay i will never ask your name why i won't ask your name the reason is i have your contact already saved so live scenario let's check do i have shivan shivani's number saved inside my phone book or not still not saved it will happen now just give me a minute Okay, let's check again. Uh, come on, yeah. Okay, so I didn't save this contact. Live scenario, guys. I didn't save this contact, but I have this number in my phone book. how by the power of logic apps all right so as soon as i get a meeting invite i get a mail in my mailbox as soon as you register for the mail there is a, a azure function which creates which talks to zoom meeting and creates an invite okay for you and there is 
something known as logic apps all right so whenever you click on the submit button there is a mail delivered to my mailbox this logic app listens to my mailbox right and as soon as there is a mail like this okay it basically uh, extracts the details from that mail so calling the details are extracted again okay and it talks to it talks to uh, google contact apis all right google contact has its own apis okay and it saves the number it, talk, it just talk to google contact api live on the screen all right and it saves ivani's number inside my phone book okay so this is what logic app does right this is it will be the approach of teaching as well as 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 uh, like i would be trying to teach you in this way uh, when we actually come down to services also the real use case is how do you use it how does an organization use it so this is what this is what logic app can do this is one of the use cases what logic app can do there is a lot of things what logic logic app can do okay then you have container services you have uh, azure container instance you have azure container and yes whatever i did i i am not a programmer guys so for for those of you who thinks that i know a lot of coding or like no no i don't know coding guys. i never did coding i'm an i'm a uh, i'm an electronics and communication graduate or an engineer you can say so uh, coding se vasta nahi hai mera okay but i am able to do all these things like right? again power of cloud okay uh uh what was saying yeah so to run containers azure provides you services like azure containers instance and to run kubernetes as a platform it provides you a service known as uh, azure kubernetes service so uh, for those of you who don't know containers fine still fine i'll i'll teach you containers as well as part of our course all right so you will understand basic at least for the containers and uh, to be very frank in today's world uh, you should know containers if you don't know, know them already okay then we will be talking about lot of about networks all right so when you talk about uh, companies they have they uh, when you talk about vms or companies they will require network so they will require vpn they will require n number of things firewall security so uh, every company will have a ciso who will screw up the infrastructure every time in the name of security right so network and security there are n number of services again which you would be covering all right so virtual network which lets you create uh, 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 subnets and uh, ip addresses then you have firewalls and network security group which allows you to uh, den- allows and denies you to cre- create uh, sorry it allows you to create or denies you to create the uh, ip address so which ip address will con- connect with which virtual machine and what port number you can define all those things inside uh, network security group and firewall all right if you want a lease line kind of connectivity from your data center to azure all right so you can do something known as express route if you want to do routing and switching all right so inside a traditional data center we have routers now again there is a, a virtual version of the router known as udr or you can say user defined routes you can do vpn you can do load balancing so there are a number of services again over here okay again it's a demo i cannot go into details of each of the services uh then for storage you have different types of storage so for keeping media content backups logs all right you have something known as storage account okay for virtual machine for installing operating system and for virtual machine you will require storage you have something known as managed disk let's say you are a company who is migrating to cloud and you have terabytes of data petabytes of data which needs to be migrated to cloud okay you have something known as import export service or data box service right so there are various tools uh, storage services then in databases you have azure sql which is equivalent of ms sql relational database there is a no sql database known as cosmos db again if you don't know what is a no sql database uh, no sql database no need to scratch your heads right now uh, we'll we'll understand what is a no sql database first and then we will go into dynamo db so don't uh, sorry cosmos db so don't worry about it if you don't understand what's a no sql database is okay then security uh, since you are using so many services do you think that always you will know what security parameters to follow answer is no you will never know what security parameters to follow so you need a buddy all right you need a friend inside azure who will tell you who will guide you okay hey bro you are doing this wrong all right this is the recommendation you should follow who will provide you that recommendation so there is a service known as security center again microsoft has changed this service to uh microsoft defender for cloud okay microsoft does this thing a lot okay so they change the names of the services like anything so don't get confused all right uh, if you are learning microsoft if you uh, from uh, 
from a period before you attended this demo. And if you see a new term, don't worry about it. Microsoft does change their services name. Like in Teams, they have changed it to Endpoint Manager. So they do, do it quite oftenly. So there is something known as Security Center, which acts as a friend for you and tells you recommendation that you have created a virtual machine, but you have kept this virtual machine wide open for the entire world. Anyone can RDP to this Windows virtual machine. All right. And anyone can screw your virtual machine or screw your application or install a ransomware, which, which will ask you money. Okay. So security center is that friend for you, which will tell you the recommendation. Okay. Then you have something known as Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel is an, uh, uh, same service. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware about SIEM. SIEM is basically nothing but security event, uh, management. So, uh, uh, you have created an active directory user, right? Uh, let's take a more, a more simpler example. Let's say I log into your, your Facebook ID and I put 10 times wrong password. All right. Is it a normal behavior? Answer is no, it's not a normal behavior. Someone is trying to screw up your Facebook account. Now everything is getting logged inside Facebook's data center and Facebook sends you a notification. So that is a security event which has happened right now. Okay. So same type of security events can happen inside your Azure infrastructure or your cloud infrastructure as well. How do you capture those security events and do analytics over those security events or keep yourself up to date about those security events? Uh, for doing that, we have a service known as Sentinel. All right. Sentinel is a service which basically helps you to uh, get all the security events. Yeah, in a very simple word, it gets you, gets you to get all the security events. Right. That is what Sentinel is. Uh, all right, this is security services. Then you have compliance services. So even in your offices, you cannot just uh, go and wear whatever you like. You cannot go in shorts to your office. You cannot wear boxes and walk into your office. No, you cannot do that, right? Similarly, on Azure, you cannot build whatever you like. Your company will still try to control you, all right? You cannot build a virtual machine which has a size of 64 virtual CPU and 128 GB of RAM in a development environment. They will tell you, are you crazy? Why are you creating this resource, right? But, but again, how would you get notified about it? That a crazy developer has created a resource of 64 virtual CPU and 128 GB of RAM in the development environment. How would you get notified? How would you find that resource is not compliant as per your company policy, all right? So there has to be certain compliance services, okay? So, uh, Azure provides you various compliance and permission related services like RBAC, Azure policy and blueprints. Again, not going into details of services. I'm just giving you a context of these services. Uh, we'll go into deep, we'll do a deep dive on these services with hands on when we actually start the classes, not just today. Okay. Okay. Then you have monitoring services, monitoring of your physical service, so not physical service, again, virtual machines, all right, app service. So let's say that logic app, which I showed you right now, which, which creates a Google contact, all right? It failed. It's not working properly. Who will give me notification? Who will tell me? So Azure also provides you monitoring service. It will monitor. Uh, so if you have created a VM and that VM has a that VM has a utilization of uh, ninety percent of CPU, again, okay, it's a red alert. Right? You should get a mail that yeah, yeah you have you have one of the VMs which has a ninety percent of utilization. So Azure Monitor does that for you, not only for uh, the infrastructure, but for billing as well. So if you have shooted your billing, all right, then you can you can you can be notified. You can do that. All right. So that is what Monitor does. Then you have uh, automation related services. So automating the creation of resources and automating the configuration of those resources are done by uh automation services so let's say i wanted to create a vm so i can use the service known as arm template which will automate the creation of vm once the vm is created i want to install php and apache on that vm desired state configuration can do that for me all right so i can write some powershell script all right again i won't write those powershell script because i'm not good at powershell i'll copy the powershell script from somewhere and it can do desired state configuration for me okay so uh that is what uh Automation services are, again, we'll do hands-on over it. You'll get a comfort level to use it on your own. Okay, uh, then DevOps services. Again, I'm not going into details of DevOps right now. Then you have analytics services. So petabytes, terabytes of data. Okay, want to do analytics over it. 
Okay, so you have analytic services for that and you have Active Directory for the identity management. So these are the services which we'll be covering broadly. And in the process of doing this, we would be, uh, okay, let's talk about project. Let's talk about project. So you would be doing a project which integrates on-prem AD with Azure Active Directory, all right? So seamless, a single sign-on experience. So single user can access on-prem resources as well as cloud resources. Okay, so we'll integrate that thing to provide a seamless SSO. Then for network crazy people, you would be doing hub and Spock architecture, right? So one main network and other Spock network connected to it. This could be my application subnets or sorry, application networks. You would be doing one of these projects like this. And for developers and people who are uh, more crazy in learning uh, containers and all those stuff. Okay, we would be doing, we would be deploying a microservices based application, an e commerce microservices based application on Kubernetes service. Okay, so we are learning all these technologies and implementing these technologies inside these projects. Okay, uh, okay this is just a guide, like a timeline overview of my career, like how it proceeded. I mean, it is not complete. Uh, after 2009, I have switched two jobs again. Okay, so uh, again, the reason for switching so many jobs and not being asked why are you not stable in one company and getting a chance continuously to work all right always at a higher position was getting certified at right time all right so i started my cloud journey in 2016 with aws all right and it was not out of uh, the uh, the fear of getting a job okay it was for it was just for the sake of curiosity for this aws i started learning aws and it helped me to excel in my career so I've done multiple cloud certifications and helped me to basically translate, uh, uh, transmit my career from one position to another position in, in a very rapid state, right? So that's the reason why you should consider doing some certification, all right? Not by just learning, but do certifications as well. Now, what are we covering uh, in this code content? Okay, so we are covering following certifications. So we are covering AZ-900, it's a very basic certification. We are covering, AZ-104, which is an administrator certification, Azure administrator certification. We are covering AZ-204, which is developer. Again, we are not doing the coding thing. We just need to understand how to develop with Azure. So this is not a developer associate. It is an exam which talks about developing solution with Azure, you know, not coding it. Okay. We are covering 303 and 304, uh, yeah, just allow me some time, then you can ask a question. This is architect. Okay, and we are covering 500, which is security. Now you must be thinking, okay, how I'm covering all these certifications. Now I'll tell you the catch. Let's, let's pick up a topic. Let's say the topic is Azure Active Directory. Let let me show you that how these cloud providers don't teach everything in one single certification. Now Azure Active Directory has following topics majorly. Topic number one, all right, creating Active Directory, creating users, groups, and permissions. Then second topic is MFA. Third topic is uh, that topic is uh, uh, SSPR, self-service password access. Then you have something known as conditional access. Then you have something known as identity protection. I'm talking about major topics which Azure has. Azure Active Directory has identity protection. Then you have then you have something known as privileged identity management. Then you have something known as identity governance. You have something known as identity governance. Then you have something known as uh, AD Connect. Okay. Then you have something uh, known as uh, application proxy. And these all topics to get basically create factor back. If you have understanding of all those topics, then you can say, I know Active Directory fully. 
अब वट माइक्रोसॉफ डस टीच यू दीज टॉपिक इन नाइन हंड्रेड एंड वन जीरो फोर टीच यू दिस टॉपिक इन टू हंड्रेड टू जीरो फोर टेल टीच यू दिस टॉपिक एंड दिस टॉपिक ओके इन आर्किटेक्ट सर्टिफिकेशन ठीक है एंड दे विल टीच यू this topic and these two topics in security certification okay and what i am trying to do is i am trying to teach you all these things okay that after doing that then only you can say ki mujhe active directory azure active directory aata hai pure tarike se if you have if you don't have idea about these things you cannot say that i know azure active directory entirely and what is this is what these certification do they don't teach you All the certification. If you do one certification, by just by doing this certification, doesn't mean that you are master of Azure Active Directory. You know everything about Azure Active Directory. You never know about any uh, fully about Azure Active Directory. Okay, so that is how by covering all the topics, all right, all the features of a particular service, we are able to span across these certifications. Okay, so if you really want to excel, all right, as a Azure engineer. Right or an Azure consultant or an Azure cloud architect. All right, and you want your knowledge to be complete. All right, you want your knowledge to be complete, not half. Then you have to learn all these things. It's up to you. You do it one by one, or you do it as a bundle. I'm trying to I'm trying to teach you as a bundle. Why again? Why teaching you this thing as a bundle? There is a reason behind. There is a there is a chain which happens. So in when you talk about identity protection it is very much related to conditional access but these are not covered in same exam okay but we are covering in same topic so it gives you a flow of the service that is the reason why we are covering like almost uh, five certification I, i don't even consider this thing as a certification but we are covering four certifications okay which is 400 uh, sorry 104 204 uh, 303 304 and 500 That is the reason why we are covering so many certifications in one single course. Okay, now if you have any questions, you can ask. Any questions? uh do i need to unmute everyone oh sorry yeah uh now you can ask your question yes am i audible yes i can hear you yeah so uh first of all thanks a lot for providing us free zoom lectures and yeah your examples are awesome we get straight into that so yeah i was asking that as you have told that you started your career with cloud uh, through aws right so like what is the difference between aws and like azure it's like same like why should you think that we should start with cloud computing with azure and not aws if you can enlighten us more on to that same thing just the uh, it's just the two different companies they provide the same set of services all right now <laughs> azure and aws each of them have the same services so when i talk about logic apps so in uh, aws there is something known as workflow service equivalent of logic apps right so it's up to you it's up to you which uh, service which cloud provider you want to start with right but uh, only thing would be you will end up learning all the cloud providers right okay so you can start with aws you can start with uh, azure you can start with even with google cloud each of them are doing well right now and each of them have market opportunities in terms of jobs as Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, duration of the course is seven seven to eight weekends. Which certification is suitable for a uh, SQL DBA? So, uh, uh, sort of, you can start with uh, the administrator certification and uh, solution architect certification. These two are the least you should do, all right, to get an understanding of platform. 
and after that there is something known as dp300 right which is an uh, specialty certification for dbas right so you can go for that one the certification name is dp300 i'm repeating it again in putting up on the chat as well right but don't jump for dp300 directly okay uh, get the knowledge of platform first and then go for dp300 Which papers we are covering in the e certification? The the code which I showed are the paper code only. Okay, thanks. And then uh, uh, you can go with one zero four and three zero three three zero four minimum. Then what will be the Certification which we'll have. Uh, can you please show us the first screen, previous screen? Uh, you can ask a question. Go ahead. I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, means uh, I would ask if uh, what will be the cloud structure and uh, which are, which papers are covering the cloud solution architect in administrator and the uh, third one was developers. So. So, solution architect three zero three three zero four. Okay. okay. Administrator one zero four. Developer mm -hmm. developer is two zero four. Okay. Security okay. is five hundred. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So, guys, please don't use chat. I'll miss your questions. Unmute yourself. Don't be shy. So there is a question on chat. Uh, are you covering cloud migration? Yes, we will be covering cloud migration using Azure Monitor. Uh, sorry, Azure Migrate Service. Uh, then there is a question. Uh, will the course cover mock drill? Yes. Uh, for we would I would be giving you mock exam or practice exam for all the certification which is mentioned. How do I start as a middle end engineer like uh, tech application server? All right. So uh, you can probably uh, do uh, AZ one zero four and you can plan for. Uh, AZ204. So admin plus uh, developer should be fine for you, right? Uh, if you want to continue with an hands-on role, if you want to get into a consulting role, just hands-on, then do 104303304. I am working as a cloud administrator, so cloud computing course can make a job opportunity. I was work, uh, shut up, right? Uh, shut up, I was working as a monitoring as well. Okay, so I hope this answers the question. So I started as a monitoring as well in 2015. Okay. Nothing more to say more than this. Kabir, this is the side. Uh, yeah. Actually, I need to understand about uh, three not three and three not four. What you will cover in uh, that? What I will cover, I will cover everything which I displayed on the screen. Uh, so. Uh, no, actually, I I think I missed uh, some point because of network issue. Uh, might uh, be. Yeah. So, so that's the reason. I'm, uh, all the compute services, VMs, uh, Azure function, logic apps, Kubernetes. All right, networking. May you have VNets. Azure Express. So which is comes into the 303 and 304. 304, right? Like the design and architecture yes, and uh, right, these right. other things. Correct. So what tool we will use for the architecture and design? You can use raw.io for doing that. You can even use uh, uh, tools like Lucid Chart, right? So these are cloud based tools. You can directly use that, use them, right? And uh, the interesting part is when you talk about these cloud providers, now you don't even need to use uh, any design tool specifically. These cloud providers provide you ready-made samples. So if you search Azure IoT in PPT, right? If you, if you want, you can create architectures in PPT as well. All right. Let me quickly show you this. So you can just download the entire set of uh, icons if you want to on your machine. And you can create architectures inside just inside your uh, PowerPoint as well. So that is also very much possible. So there are a number of ways. So I can show you by various ways. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm working as a uh, server test team leader. Okay. So which, which certification is uh, suitable for 
So I, you're talking as an internet management kind of thing, right? No, I'm working as a uh, service desk team lead in one, one MNC company. So which certification is suitable for, suitable for my job? Well, is a uh, fundamental like, or? No, oh. fundamental is very basic. All right, start, we are do 104 and 303 and 304. Administrator plus architect. That's the minimum. Okay. One zero uh, yeah, hi, Dabir. Uh, which certification you will uh, suggest for the desktop engineers? Minimum you just do 104, right? And target for 303 and 304. That's the minimum uh, that will give you the knowledge over here. Very minimum. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, hello, Dabir. Yes, sir. Yeah, if someone want, wants to become a data engineer, then uh, which uh, cloud platform should you select? So uh, it would be never about cloud platform, uh, sort of, all right. So when you talk about data engineers, uh, the only thing is uh, when you talk about processing the data, all right. Mm -hmm. So you should basically know uh, a very, you should be very good at Python, all right. All right. Again, when you talk about data engineer, there are two tracks. There is something known as the data engineer administrator who will just set up the cluster and there is an actual data engineer who, who will write the code. So in that scenario, it's not about just learning cloud platform with cloud platform. As a data engineer, you should know some 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 level some expertise in Python, all right. And you should understand all right how is a uh, big data platform how does big data platform works or how does Apache Beam, Airflow, Nifi. There are various technologies. There are various edge base in number of open source technologies. You should be aware about those open source technologies. Then only you can become a data engineer. If you know this open source technology by default, all right, you just need to implement uh, them as a cloud service, right, and it becomes easy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so question on chat. I'm a graduate. I have also done Linux certification. What should I do? So, uh, Ashutosh, uh, uh, the best thing you should do, you can do is you can start with, uh, uh, 104. All right. And then target for DevOps certification. All right. So, Cloudful, cloud plus DevOps is also a very good combination of getting for getting the jobs, right? So that is what you can, you should try. All right, and if you have knowledge, being a Fletcher doesn't change, uh, doesn't harm you, all right? It will give you, it will, it will, no one will, if you have right knowledge, all right, you will still get the job. So 104 plus DevOps tools, DevOps tools like uh, Ansible, Terraform, all right? Docker containers, Kubernetes, those are the things you need to learn immediately to land up in a job without any hassle. If you do Kali uh, 104, which is an uh, administrator exam, tough time finding a job as a fresher. Okay. Achha. After completing uh, this course 104, and uh, like how much salary will get? Sorry. After completing this course 104, mm -hmm. uh, how much uh, as a fresher I can get? How much what? I can get salary. Salary. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah, it completely depends. All right, so uh, you you can land up in a job if you have right knowledge. Plus, you have some understanding of automation tools. All right, you can land up in a job with uh, a minimum package of seven to eight lakhs. And what is the duration of course 104? I don't teach only 104. I, I, as I said, I teach it as a bundle. All right. It will okay. take seven to eight weekends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will contact you sure. through WhatsApp. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, will we get any doc, uh, any book or like? Ah, uh... uh, Just give me some more time. Okay, yeah. 
एंड सर्टिफिकेट भी मिलेगा ना उसके बाद में हां कोर्स कॉम्पिटिशन सर्टिफिकेट यू विल गेट हेलो यस यस हाय i need uh, i just have the one questions uh, mm -hmm. if i want I, if i'm looking for the um, cloud engineer jobs mm -hmm. and of any opportunity in the company so mm -hmm. which 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 is the certification it should be the i completed first bare minimum yeah. 104 104 okay yes. and if you want to increase your chances of getting a job do go with the architect certification as well okay and uh, in this uh, 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 when you are start this course duration it, and it will start from next saturday once people come yeah yeah okay uh, it's it's all the uh, you have just mentioned uh, in the this uh, demonstrations uh, it's not you uh, just it is not only for the one year five certification it's a completely bundle right right right, right. okay 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 Okay. Thank so I'll hold everyone for some time. Let me complete the slides, and then again we'll uh, switch back to question and answers. Uh, so, in terms of uh, uh, what benefits or what reading materials you will get from the class. So while preparing for the certification, that's that's quite obvious. Apart from that, uh, as a beginner, like what, as a beginner, or what are the expectation for all, from you as a job at a at a job level, right? So. Uh, what should you expect at job, or what should you tell a interviewer? Like I know these things to get a job, right? Those all things, service by service, we will keep on discussing during the classes. Then uh, I will be providing you reading material. So this is what it looks like. so for each course there would be reading material associated to it and like for example ag 900 okay so these are the reading material for fundamental course right okay. so for each course there is reading materials associated to it so i will be providing you access to these reading materials and you will get a uh, it would be a lifetime access again okay and Each session should be recorded. I will be providing you access to those sessions. Okay, I will be providing you the uh, dumps basically, or you can say practice exams, right? Which will help you to clear the certifications, the global certifications. Right, I will be providing you that. So these are the things which you will get. Again, these are soft copies. All right, I cannot provide you hard copies. I cannot cannot be delivered uh, in everyone's home with, from me. All right. Uh, so you will have this access to this portal. All right. Uh, or this uh, learning management system right for lifetime and you can read and i try keeping it up to date or right as much as possible okay so this is you will get uh, in terms of the benefits right and the again as i said the mock exams that i'll share you you will get a post completion certificate which looks like this which mentions x number of hours were completed learning as your okay the course fees is 8000 rupees okay it would be saturday and sunday the timing would be 6 to 9 okay and it would be a total of seven weekends course uh, this is six is old right it will take seven to eight weekends to complete right since previously i don't didn't uh, didn't added 500 all right from last two batches i am be doing 500 okay so the slide was made way back than that right so that's why it shows six weekends that the course duration would be seven to eight weekends Yeah, this is it for my side. This completes the slide and the demo. Uh, now back to the questions, right? Again, uh, okay, just give me a minute. So I'll I'll seek confirmation from everyone. I'll send you a WhatsApp message if you're interested to join the course. You can reply back to the message that yes, and I'll share you the further details for the enrollment. Okay. Uh, now back to the questions. Whatever questions you have. सर आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन हम्म आ ये जो अभी ये जो कोर्स कंटेंट रहेगा 6 7 वीक का 
ये मिक्सिंग लैंग्वेज में रहेंगे आप सिर्फ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में या फिर हिंदी लैंग्वेज में तो क्या होता है कि ऑनलाइन पे कैसे कोई अगर कोई अगर वर्ड है जो इंग्लिश में अगर वो मिस हो जाता है तो आगे तो समझ नहीं आता ये जो कोर्स रहेंगे हिंदी लैंग्वेज मेनली इट वुड बी इन इंग्लिश बट इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड सर्टेन वर्ड्स ठीक है मान लीजिए सो यू कैन आस्क मी टू रिपीट बैक ओके विन स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड से के कैन यू रिपीट बैक इन हिंदी आई विल आई डू दैट सो दैट लाइक ओके ओके क्योंकि ऑनलाइन में थोड़ा बहुत मिस्टेक थोड़ा बहुत सुनने में तब नेटवर्क इशू होता है नेटवर्क लैग रहता है आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट ओके uh hi rabir as you have uh, told us that you, you have the offline uh, you have the branches in thane i have so is, uh, right now it's not yeah. functional okay it's not functional okay 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 try to open it but not have the i don't have the time like that now okay okay yeah okay how to connect you if we have any doubt So, uh, did you get a WhatsApp message from my number saying that reminder that calling me on that number? Sure. Okay, guys. So I'll seek confirmation from everyone. If you have doubts, uh, you have my number. I mean, again, if you don't have my number, you can. I'll just quickly uh, put the number on the chat message. uh you can reach out to me so those are interested to join uh, just confirm me back yeah i want to join and i will share you the further details so just share it with everyone okay so this is it for demo uh thank you for being here that's that's it thanks thanks abir yeah, no problem mm thanks abir thanks abir thank you Sir, I'll disconnect. Take care. Bye bye.